Okay everyone, it's the 7th of March and this is the Thursday morning briefing with Hamish, Tony and Ryan. We're going to drag this out for Nicky, who's uh, <laughs> playing football in 15 minutes. It's probably 10 minutes now, Nicky. We just talk really slowly and drag out all our points, <laughs> even longer than usual. Um, yeah, how are things guys? How, how are you getting on? We are just chatting about um, Dublin. There, weren't we? That's the kind of things we do yeah. while people people think we're frantically getting ready to start the stream and we're actually just chatting away. <laughs> yeah, only because I'm off to Dublin tomorrow with my good lady wife for a wee break, so that's how it came up. Off here. Fabulous. Fabulous city. Love it. Um, miss it, actually. Great city. Um, right, uh, what are we chatting about? Brendan Rogers, cited by the, the SFA, uh, appealing four years or something like that when they eventually feel they, they, they <laughs> want to get round to it. Um, could miss, I think, Livingston away and Rangers away are the, the games. you potentially get a, a two-match ban. I don't actually... I've not actually looked into whether <coughs> a two-match two ban is a formality or whether, like, there is any argument here because he has broken the rule over, you know, the, the wording used. Um, yeah. Have you looked into it at all, Tony? I have indeed. I... I wanted to educate myself on these matters, so I spoke to a couple of people yesterday who put some meat in the bones for this, right? So the first first thing I thought as well was the timing of it. Well, it's all very convenient. And I thought, was well, Brendan Rogers walking to Hamden or has he just held a, a cab, tortoise taxis to get him there in three weeks, right? So, But I was reliably informed that this is actually standard procedure, so that was news to me, so... I thought, good, I'm educating myself here. So It's I'll, different I'll, to the player stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'll educate you guys. Yeah, I'll educate you guys as well on the process because same way that allows clubs time to respond to charges and for a counter respond, response, sorry, and then before the case is heard before a judicial panel. But there's a real important thing to note here, and I didn't know this either. This is not a match offence, right? Not in capital letters. These are press and media comments as opposed to technical area comments. Right. right, so the SFA now have three options. A fine, which is normally the go-to option, right? A ban ranging from, I don't know, 1 to 20 games I've, I've seen yeah. uh, written down and stuff. So, But part of that also could be suspended, right? So, yeah. and Or a warning based on previously previous disciplinary issues or sightings of which Brendan Rogers <coughs> has an exemplary track record. Right, an exemplary track record. So, but you could get like a warning or a censure as to your conduct, right? So that's 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 what can happen here, right? So this was all news to me. I, I kind of had a right wee deep dive into it and thought, okay. So I don't think it's the open and shut case that everybody thinks. So I looked at a couple of cases and Craig Levine, remember his rant against Mike McCurry, two thousand and eight. Yep. I utter, it utterly well. lambasted Mike McCurry, right? Yep. Dundee United lost three one. He get fined I five grand so. for that, right? No ban, you get fined five grand, right? And Stephen Gerrard's rant about everybody's against Rangers and it's been happening for seasons. Uh, no ban, no fine, no warning, because the SFA didn't feel that he had a case to answer. So that's fine. So it just depends on what way this falls. But I thought I would try and put some kind of perspective on a narrative that was developing that he's going to be banned for Ibrooks and stuff like that. He might well get banned for Ibrooks or it might be a suspended ban. But there's a highly likely chance that he could get heavily fined and censured in a warning as to future conduct and stuff, or a suspended ban that if he does break the rules again, that that will kick in. So, as I say, I, I, I kind of I was it was more for my own benefit before yeah. I jumped in any kind of mad, you know, conspiracy theories as conspiracy theories have been having a field day with us. So, and I just thought I would impart that information so it kind of gives you a wee bit more kind of clarity or kind of, you know, views about it. So, as I say, uh, Celtic will have ample time to prepare their case. Yeah. And hopefully they, they back their manager to the hilt on this. And, you know, with, with the Levine one as well, I mean, that was an astonishing rant and he get fined five grand. So, yeah. I, you know, th there's precedents there and unless things have changed and I've missed somebody having a rant like that and in the years that have followed, I, I can't remember to, my, to the best of my knowledge yeah. somebody really having a pop. The thing that might land them in hot water is the fact he's named John Beaton and he's called him incompetent. 
he's banking rights on that because it says it in the actual rules that you're not allowed to do that. So we'll see what happens. That's interesting. Yeah, I remember the, the Craig Levine stuff like it was yesterday. That was obviously in the SPL days, so I wonder if the, yeah. the rules are slightly different now. That may be something worth looking into. But those Levine comments were, they were insinuating bias that day. Yeah, they, yeah. They, were, they were saying, that, I think you quoted something like, um, we would have been as well not turning up today yeah. and we're never going to win today. Yeah, and to be fair, that was that, that performance <laughs> that day may have been even worse than the weekend. She might have Curry would have been better phoning him and telling him to stay in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I think those but, are his actual Just when you're so saying that, you're reminding me, remember Rob, Robbie Nielsen a couple of seasons ago, he said, oh, if I, if I said what I really thought of um, whoever the ref was, I'd get put in jail and all that stuff. And <laughs> maybe he's got out of that because he's not actually said that. But I mean, to me, that's kind of just as, as bad as, as what Roger said. Yeah, it's insane. Sorry, Ryan, on you go, on you go, yeah. <laughs> No, no. Um, you you lost connection there for a wee minute there, Tony. Um, I he's insinuating something there as well, which you know if you put two and two together, what what is he saying? I just think it's a bit. I think it's all exhausting. Four days, five days on from the game. I know that. Oh, buckle up, Brendan Rodgers. What is it? Sorry. <laughs> buckle up, because you've got another. But, you've got another. Three, I know. Four I know. It's, it's it's just it's such a long time between incidents. I think it was what twenty five days. I was actually speaking to somebody else about the the ruins as well and the reason why it's 25 days on is to build a case but it's also to take the emotion out of cases now i don't know how <laughs> taking the emotion out of this case will mean right just put it two games before the celtic rangers game where you want brendan rogers to be on the touchline this is why i think it's better off you're better off to dealing with these things is in a case-by-case basis because um you know i know i know it's the rules and players can get fast tracked because they need to be on the park but I don't see why managers can't be the same. If you're fast tracking a player, then I don't know why you can't get a manager in as well. It's just maybe that's just a problem with the rules. I know Brendan Rogers was silly; he shouldn't have said what he said. Uh, whether he agree with his comments or not, he would be sure have worded it slightly differently. But yeah, we are where we are at the moment, and Celtic are just going to have to contest this charge to the hilt on the the 28th of March. It falls under a non-urgent case. That's why they yeah. don't fast track managers. That's the the official. Uh, wording of that, it's non-urgent uh, so that's why it's in three weeks and as I said, time to prepare your case, get a response to that and then before it becomes before basically the, the football equivalent of court mm. Two I things like the criteria that makes it non-urgent <coughs> to be honest but you know, that's, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's just a, I think <coughs> I think the, the rules probably are that like the boring answer is the rules probably just are the rules and, and that's the way <coughs> things are and it's just unfortunate for us, and two things are just two points I want to raise and give me your thoughts on whether this would form part of, of Celtic's case. I'm not sure. Not number one would be Brendan Rogers, certainly in his time at Celtic, has never yeah. said anything like that or, or been in this kind of position. I would probably argue throughout his career, although I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, the point two, and again, I don't know if this has an effect at all, but he, was, he wasn't angry and lashing out when he made the comments, he, he was very calm when he, he, he said those things. Now, again, I don't know if that makes a difference because he's still, you know, called the ref incompetent or the VAR incompetent, but, you know, would that be part of Celtic's argument, the fact that, like, Rogers was actually quite calm, um, you know, while he did it? It wasn't as if he was lashing out. I don't know. Listen, I, I think uh, if you've got a decent enough legal team, you can argue that case, can't you? I don't think Brendan Rogers has ever called out ref. He made a point of saying that on Sunday. Yeah. That he's never in all his career, and it's one day Liverpool, Leicester, Celtic first time around, he's never uh, called out referees because he never felt the need to. So whilst he was probably angry and spewing inside, he was very calm yeah. and measured. But I think the fact that he, he's named and shamed beaten and called him incompetent is, is what will probably will be the kind of crux of this matter. So that that will be what where the arguments for and against will will be settled, and uh, yeah, I, I I agree with you, Michelle. He was very measured whilst he was, you know, having a, a pop, but he wasn't he ranting, he wasn't he angry, he wasn't he seething, you know, he, he was he was given his opinion, and he felt that the game was re refereed by John Beaton, or certainly those two particular decisions were re refereed by John Beaton, and. Uh, yeah, so I, I think he's entitled to do that. I now think it's up to the club to back their manager. And 
see where it falls. But again, you mentioned there like SPL and it's got now the Scottish Premiership. I don't think the rules will have changed that much, if at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're statutes, yeah, right. aren't they? And them rules are them rules, as you say. So if they go to fall back on these things as a fine, then they might get heavily fined. And I think there might be part of a, a ban, but it might be suspended because of his exemplary conduct before. And I think they do take those kind of things into uh, into their uh, thinking when when uh, they're handing out or meeting out punishments. He, he was clearly, I mean, I, I maybe phrased that wrong a minute ago, he was clearly frustrated, clearly mm-hmm. frustrated. They wouldn't have said that if he wasn't frustrated. The point I'm making is that it was a calculated decision to say what he said. It, what, it didn't feel to me like a complete, you know, he, he, he saw the red mist with the minute he walked into that press room. And, and I, I think personally, Rogers, you know, had a decision to make after the game, the way he played it. It was a damaging afternoon for us. Let's not forget that. It was a really mm-hmm. disappointing, frustrating afternoon for a number of reasons, including the team not playing well enough. And Rogers, I think, took the decision to to continue this kind of um, siege mentality, if you want to keep using that phrase, rather than call the players out. I thought it was notable that the first point he made uh, in almost every interview was the players kind of stuck at it and gave me all they, they had but the officials let us down. So he clearly wanted to keep the players' spirits high. Again, I've not got a problem with it. I just wonder if, if maybe he regrets using that incompetent word, especially if it, it could keep him out of a, a derby, which I think would be frustrating. It's the it's the second time in, in two weeks that you know some of his comments maybe could have been worded a bit differently or he could have maybe taken a, a deep breath before he said what he said but you know you're in the heat at the moment you can't control yourself even though he was trying to control himself you could tell he was holding back he was calm but he, want, he was really really frustrated at what was happening you could see it in the room you could see that he was he was annoyed with the way the game had went um but he was he was holding it back which maybe maybe meant that he could he could have stopped what he was saying but i don't know maybe he needed to get it out um because the first thing he says was the game was decided by the officials and then he goes on to talk about that for the next two minutes um you know he was always going to talk about it given the, the nature of the game that's what everybody was talking about after the game it's not as if he was he was like the the one exception everybody else was talking about the officiating after that game nobody was really talking about the football in that sense because it, it took over the game completely and he was yeah. just Answering a question that, that went that went to him, could he have could he have worded it better? Absolutely, he could have said that for a couple of things over the past couple of weeks. But you know, when you're in the heat of the moment of these things and you're under a title race that you you've got loads of pressure on you, you're you're bound to say things that maybe you might not not regret, but word differently a couple of hours later. And I, I just think he's been stung with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. We've got a good while to to leave this and, and probably mm-hmm. come back to. It. Um, Joe saying uh, now that it's been said don't let the issue go take the fine and keep going uh, for change the bias must stop Celtic uh, should stop the VAR payments to the system I've seen a few comments like that yeah. recently um, I don't know if it's <coughs> as, as sim- simple as that or, or no. how that would work but VAR is not the problem here at all um, and I think Brendan Rodgers made that it. point it's the people operating the VAR that is, that is clearly the problem the technology works. The technology gets offside rules or most offside rules. You know, I, I keep on thinking that motherwell away one a couple of years ago, but they get most decisions right, and it need it's needed in the game now just due to the money that's in the game. But the people that are operating it have to be qualified to use the machinery. You're only as good as the people that are operating you, and that that's the reason why VAR's struggling at the moment is because of the people that's operating it, not because of the system itself. I, I agree with that point, right? I also think that VAR fundamentally isn't working the, the way it is at the moment. Um, and I, I think it has too much of an influence on matches and it's 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 been, it's re-refereeing matches for me and it's, it's, been, asked, my problem. it's been asked to come in and, and get involved in too many decisions. And I don't know exactly how you, you, you sort that going forward, forward, whether you look at some sort of challenge system where teams can challenge a certain amount like in basketball tennis. or te- tennis for example or um you limit what var can be used for and i think it's four things at the moment you maybe limit it to just goals or something like that because it's it just be, like, even, yeah, even it in a be. champions league like you think back to that atletico game when maida yeah. was sent off and it's like that ruined that game and for me that wasn't a red card so it's meant to be clear and obvious errors wasn't it yeah my definition it's not, it's not. I get it, that's what i mean it's not it's not 
Yeah, I'm it's over not. it. <laughs> it's, it's not. So that's that's you know, so the people operating it and act, the actual kind of wording around VAR, what it was brought in for and what it was brought in to do, we've kind of lost the thread on that, haven't we? Yeah, lost the plot. You know, well, the plot basically, aye. So we all knew this was going to happen when VAR yeah. was implemented. It's not as if this is surprising whatsoever. We all knew because we knew what officials were, and I don't want to talk about certain officials because maybe I'll get charged. Um, you know, I don't want to hear in April or May or something. A banning but... from the, the show. <laughs> need, need to bring in Kevin. Um, <laughs> he'll, he'll probably have stuff to say about VAR, mind you. Um, but yeah. That's, that's a series. Yeah. That's not a that's Yeah, not a it's, 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 we all knew this was going to happen back last year when it was, or the year before when it was implemented. Um it's just I don't know why, how it's taken so long to get to this point. I thought it would would have been a lot sooner. Then again, to be fair, the first game that Celtic played in was at Tynecastle, where VAR was an absolute shambles. So it seems as if yeah, whenever a... Celtic go to Tynecastle in these games, it's just absolutely crazy. That's my big issue with VAR. I think li- limit its use. It's getting too involved in things. Uh, my ball saying the reason he had to highlight the incompetence this time is because the games are meaningful and points are crucial. First time around, we were so far ahead from our rivals, refs couldn't help. Uh, Claire saying, I can't see him being banned as he has no history of this characteristic. Yes, he was disappointed, but we all say things we shouldn't. Correct. Uh, I think he will get suspended sentence with a warning to hold his tongue in a proper manner and probably get a hefty fine. It's interesting you said that, Tony, because the suspended sentence is probably, given his, his lack of history with this yeah. kind of thing, I'm, I'm <coughs> pond- wondering whether a suspended sentence may be the route they go down. Yeah, which is why I kind of had a look at it yesterday and and kind of explained that today because I, I was wanting for my own personal because I don't think any of us are au fait with the workings of the SFA and, and disciplinary procedures because we don't, well, you know, you can be a football anorak about your team and all that, but I just think things like that are something that's, you know, spewed up every now and again, i.e. when this happens. So you want to have a better understanding and a better grip of it and, you know, and, you know, Social media people tell you this, that, and the next thing. But as I say, I had a, a conversation with a couple of people yesterday, and it was for my own benefit. So I just thought it'd be worthwhile bringing it up on here, and just because there was that narrative building, or the conspiracy theory narrative, and all that, and and all sorts of things being said. So I just thought I'd bring a wee bit of perspective on it, and actually just kind of uh, you know education as well, because I educated myself in the process, and I think that's part of your job at times to educate people to if they weren't aware of what happens next so i i i wait I, but i i've got a feeling that a, a heavy fine and a, and a suspended sentence could be the outcome because of who it is and he doesn't have yeah. a track record for it and it's probably the first time i've ever heard him speaking in in that manner we may not be the main event today, guys, because uh, there's a, a good debate going on in the live chat i'm more interested in that than you it's between brown warrior and um, Chill Pill <laughs> the rest of the chat the, uh, <laughs> deb- debating the Yang Red card keep it up um, and I will just won't bother with these two I'll just keep my eyes on, on the chat we talk about uh, Bernabe what, what's the story there Ryan? Um, SC International are close to agreeing I think it's a loan deal with an option to buy for the 23 year old Argentinian I was writing about it yesterday um, I think this is best for all for all concerned that Bernabe leaves the club although it's two, it's two first team players, him and Abada as well, which should be announced in the next couple of days. I know we're not really talking about that as much, but those two players over the next couple of days should be leaving the club. It seems as if Celtic are the, the busiest club in the world at the moment, out with the transfer window, because uh, they're getting loads of these deals done, they're getting <laughs> the players irony. out the door. Yeah, I know, absolutely. You know, If you're going to be busiest at some point, I guess make it in the middle of March. Um, but yeah, Bernabe seems to be going south of the equator to, to Brazil. Um as was as I guess, um, he's he's not trusted to be the backup to Greg Taylor. Uh, Brendan Rodgers clearly doesn't fancy him as a player, and I think I think he's I think he's moving to pastures now. I don't. I if, if he does well in Brazil, I hope he gets his permanent move. But I just think it's been a bit of a disastrous signing, pound for pound. Uh, Robert's got a nice optimistic view. Tony <laughs> uh, Bernabe deal will be announced on Friday, followed by Greg Taylor getting injured on. On Saturday. I wouldn't surprise you, would it? <laughs> the way the season's been going. It's just, it was ever thus. Self-fulfilling prophecies happening every, you know, every other week. But yeah, I, I just think 
Bernabe's made more headlines off the park than he has on it, hasn't he? Yeah. And for three point seven five million, Celtic can't afford to get that kind of uh, for that kind of outlay. They can't can't really afford to get the players wrong, and they've just got it wrong. It's been he's been woeful, absolutely woeful. And I think his car's been marked ever since he missed that first team meeting with Brendan Rodgers. I think that was the, the ultimate sign of disrespect to the manager, and he came up with some kind of excuse that. The alarm never went off or something, you know. Just we've all, ridic- we've all used that one. Yeah, uh, yeah, ridiculous, isn't it? You know what I mean. But uh, and I just think the writing was on the wall because I think the manager would have felt he let down his teammates, he let himself down, and he, but he let him down. And you know, I, I you know, you, you want players to succeed, you, you desperately want them to succeed, but it's just not happened for a variety of reasons. And uh, without going back to it again, but. My, my big concern and all of that is the recruitment. Who signed them? What did they base it on? You know, Mark Lowell's first signing. Yeah, well, yeah, we know who signed them, but I'm just sort of saying, well, someone has to sit me down and make it make sense because yeah. Celtic splashed out 3.75 million on this guy. Somebody has to it's... tell me why. It must have what been potential. They, 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 they can't have looked at him and seen like a, a tidy player because he's not that. They must have looked no. at him and gone, he's a bit rough around the edges, but he has real potential. That's, That's yeah, the only I, thing I can think of. Because he's got no redeeming quality, has he? Well, sometimes he'll do a, a, a run where he beats three or four players. and you know He did show some, uh, I'm saying very slight signs of promise, but you know whenever... Burnaby was included in the first team. There was always that risk and that liability at left back that he could do something wrong defensively or be out of position defensively. I think the writing was on the wall with that uh, that Kilmarnock late equaliser where he just gets muscled off the ball by uh, by was it Watson. K- uh, David Watson. David Watson who headed the ball into the back of the net and Burnaby's just got his arms out as if you know I've been fouled here. You know you've got to be stronger than that. Um, yeah, it's a, it was an absolutely dreadful signing. You know, a lot of his stuff off the pitch uh, leaves a lot to be desired. His, his play on the pitch leaves a lot to be desired. It's definitely a position that Celtic need to prioritise in the summer window, I would say, get a, get a strong left back in to challenge Greg Taylor. Because that's what Bernabe was brought in to do, to challenge Greg Taylor. And he didn't challenge him whatsoever. In fact, the one positive I could say about Bernabe is that he pushed Greg Taylor on in that second season under Postacoglu yeah. because Greg Taylor got a lot better because he had a some form of a left back challenging him. But so you, yeah, he was never really the first about, choice, was he? The best thing about Bernabe was Greg Taylor playing well. That's that's the yeah. best thing we can say about Bernabe. For, for Honestly, me, it was that, see, see that that Derby at Ibrooks, the two all game at the the start of twenty twenty three. Um, when Greg Taylor went down injured in Postacoglu, put Juranovic on, who'd just come back from World Cup at left back rather than Bernabe. For me, that was a moment when I'm like, yeah, there's no trust there. Yeah, I, I listen. There's been so many moments, hasn't there? As I say, uh, um, I, I don't like to be disparaging or heavily critical of Celtic players, but I, I just didn't really see what redeeming quality he had because. People say, oh, he was better going forward. Well, he couldn't be any worse defensively, could he? He was just found wanting a lot. And you say, oh, his passing was good. It was erratic. The old Scott Nisbet thing we said, every pass was an adventure with Bernabe. You know, he, he lacked <laughs> height. Yeah, he lacked height, didn't he? So, you know, and out muscle for a commander, you know, so he lacked physical presence too. You know, he, he scored a howitzer at Dingwall. You know, and everybody thought that was the right. This is the the real Burnaby. Turns out it was just flash in the pan, wasn't it? So, yeah. and I don't think at any time that he knuckled down either, because he just didn't seem to be learning off either manager that he played under. Because he was still doing the same things and making the same mistakes, which for me were were basics under Ange and uh, Brendan Rodgers. So. Who, who was it that he scored against? Was it Gamba Osaka, the one that he gave yeah, the ball right. away with a massive touch and then Spread went the up the park yards. and scored? Yeah. That was Bernabe in a nutshell. Um, you know, very it, consistently the only, inconsistent. The only thing that made it better was if he'd put it wide rather than into the net. <laughs> that would have probably lived up to it, yeah. But it's, it's, it's a shame how it's worked out for him because he's a guy that's went to a new country that's tried his hardest to acclimatise, but, you know, I, I just don't think he's got the... 
ability to play for Celtic as a as a first team left back. Maybe he could have been a winger. I'm not so sure, but maybe maybe he was a winger earlier on in his career and he was moved, moved back the way for a reason. But yeah, I hope he does well at International. You know, big club in Brazil. Um, he'll definitely have adoring fans. Um, so yeah, I hope he, I, hope, I hope that loan deal does well for him. Which goes back to the original question: What skill set did he bring to the table, which made him worth three point seven five million pounds? What did Mark Lowell see then? These are questions that have to be asked. That was his area of expertise, apparently. And I've heard that from a few oh, people that South America yeah. was, his, um, was his expertise area. But yeah. Celtic haven't been back in that market since then. So, <laughs> yeah. well, it's not um, surprising. What would Thomas say uh, if Burnaby goes? Who's the left back backup? My answer would probably be Anthony Ralston at the moment. Yeah, it is that, at the moment. That yeah, yeah. Uh, no yeah. question. Settled on that. Any yeah, advance yeah. on Anthony Ralston? Sold. <laughs> I'd like it to be, I'd like it to be natural frame because I thought he looked good against Feyenoord, but we've not really seen him since since that uh, since that what, appearance in which I thought he really caught the eye. What's Montgomery's injury like? Does anyone know? Long term. It's a long term injury. I don't know what it is, but it's it was a um a considerable one that he wasn't even going back on loan to, to Motherwell. I think it just got cut short because it was because of the severity of the injury, which is unfortunate because he needs game time because he didn't get a lot of game time at Fleetwood Town. Um, so that injuries yeah. really came at the worst possible time for him. Uh, a few people saying scales, Gary and Ian saying scales, Danielle saying frames is injured at the moment. Um, d- dare I bring up Mikey Johnson for a second? Yeah, I it's, think you have just, to. It's, 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 it's getting, I feel like you're going to have something really wacky for us, Ryan. Recall him, get him in that team. Come on, he can, in form, he can take us to the Celtic's title. He's in-form winger at the moment. It just so happens that he's playing for West Brom. That's, I know it's it's a sad indictment of where Celtic are is the in the wing position at the moment. But it was a, another incredible goal last night, and I'm glad to see him do well because it, it's clear that he, I don't think he's going to work out for him at Celtic, and that's fine. You know that happens for lots and lots of players. But if he's found somewhere that you know somewhere that he can play his game without the pressures of playing for Celtic at West Brom, um, you know fighting for promotion, fighting for a playoff spot. Uh, spot in the in the championship, which is a really high standard this season, then I'm all for it. I hope that he can get a permanent move off of this and uh, move on to pastures new in the summer, and hopefully he can make Celtic some money as well because he, he seems to be lighting it up down there. All of his goals, I could be wrong here, seem to happen a at night and be live on Sky Sports. It's mad. I mean, and there might be an interesting point in there because, like, obviously West Brom fans. I was looking in their Twitter uh, page, you know, last night. Um, and, and they were all, you know, saying, like, how did this guy never make it at Celtic? So if they manage to get promoted, there's going to be a real clamour, I think, from their support to spend some of that mm-hmm. money on Mikey Johnson. But also, like, if you did you hear the Sky Sports commentator last night when Johnson scored? It was basically like, he's done it again. Like, it's almost becoming like a thing. So you wonder if, like, other teams down south and suddenly we could have a bit of genuine interest in, in Mikey Johnson. I compared it almost... And I don't mean in terms of the quality of the player before anyone jumps down my throat. I compared it almost to Jota coming to Celtic and that Jota was really struggling at his boyhood club in Portugal and he found a new home, lit it up and, and we signed him. We might be witnessing something similar with, with Mikey Johnson, Tony. Is the reason Mikey Johnson's at West Brom? Yeah, agreed. Right. He's not good enough to play for Celtic. That train has passed. Agreed. He can score all the wonder goals he wants in the world. It's a win-win for Celtic if they can get some decent... Uh, cash for him, uh, and and over with a loan option to buy, but that that Celtic career train has passed for Mikey Johnson, so he's now trying to impress future employers, of which he's doing a very good job. But I've got to be honest, people say oh, that's that the next thing. I don't particularly care what Mikey Johnson does with West Brom because he's not playing for Celtic. People say, oh, he's, you know, but he's not, and as I say, there's a reason he's at the Hawthorns and not at Celtic Park, so. You know, I, I've moved on from Mikey Johnson. Uh, I wish him well. I hope he does well and gets the move that he wants. Just And the amount of times or the goals that you see where he did that in a Celtic shot, cut inside and then scalped the ball out of the stadium, it's, it, it's frightening. It's absolutely frightening. So he just couldn't do it at Celtic. So, as I say, he, he's down there. He's tearing it up. He's doing very, very well. But not for me. Uh, just he's had umpteen chances under many managers and just couldn't cut it at Celtic. So I think uh, you know a parting of the ways is inevitable in the summer and I wish him well. 
I agree with you, right? The one thing I would say, if he keeps up that form and scores another, you know, 10 goals before the end of the season, you surely have a look at him in the summer. Yeah, you've got to. If, if he does that, if there is such a, a turnaround, um, because he'd be arguably the form player in the championship going back to... And taking away the fact that he played for Celtic before, if Celtic were bringing up a championship player that scored, what, seven, eight, nine, ten goals in the second half of the season, take Mikey Johnson's name out of it, you'd be excited to see a player like him. Maybe... I'm not, I'm not saying this will happen, but I think the reason why a lot of people are so annoyed about it is the fact that you know that there's you, you can't take Mikey and, Johnson's name out of it because you've seen Mikey Johnson. No, I, I, know, I know, absolutely. The reason people are annoyed is because of what Coon's not bringing to the team at the moment, or because of what Palmer's not bringing. They're seeing a winger do something, you know, and, and the players that have came in to replace Mikey Johnson aren't doing the basics, which is what is expected of them. And Coon, Coon doesn't look like he can beat a man, whereas Mikey Johnson looks like he can beat every man down south. So I, I just think that's the that, that's the reason why we're in this current situation is because the other wingers aren't, you know, aren't pulling their weight at the moment and doing the things that are expected of them. Do I think that he's got a, another career renaissance in him, Mikey Johnson? Probably not. But um I'm just making you know something F. Yeah, if 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 he was to continue in this trajectory and score another six, exactly. seven, eight goals. Then you've got to look at him at pre season at least because you know he'll be he'll be hot property. Tony doesn't I think, know. I don't think um, Mikey Johnson will ever be hot property. He's having a purple patch, but he'll revert to type. Yes, just enough. now, Tony. He's you might be right, Tony. You might Brom. be right. Uh, but yeah, for West Brom, Ryan, listen to yourself. For West Brom, I've never felt like that in Mikey Johnson at any stage in his career at Celtic, and he said umpteen chances, and I wanted him to do well because he was a young kid. He was the next big thing. Show me what you got, Mikey. Mikey showed me what he got today, the freedom of Hamden. All he had to do was put the ball in the net, he ran through and buckled. His legs buckled, his bottle crashed, and you just think to yourself, you know, your your career could have been built yeah. on that moment and you fluffed your lines. And I just think to myself, well, you know what, that's microcosmic of Mikey Johnson's career, not what he's doing with West Brom at this yeah, minute in time. Oh, the West Brom fan. The the one West Brom fan we've got watching has just logged off, Tony. That's has a he? shame. Oh, That's a shame. Actually, you got rid of him. I got rid of I don't him. Know yeah. if he, don't know if he'll be back. Uh, right, I've enjoyed this today, guys. We've we've rattled through a few a few topics. Someone was commenting, uh, have have Tony and Ryan had a falling out? Interesting stuff. <laughs> Why? We'll be on the undercard. We'll be on the undercard for uh, uh, Joshua and uh, Ngannou tomorrow night. I thought no, you're in the undercard for Chilpill and Brown Warrior because they're they're still going at. Are they going at it? Are they? Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the stream's going to end soon. You you need to get your your final word in. Whoever gets the final word in is a winner. That's the way it works. <laughs> uh, right. Thanks, guys. Uh, before we go, thanks again to MPH Group and uh, Navy and for sponsoring this. Um, MPH Group have got an enticing uh, winter boiler promotion, um, so you can you can check that out. Um, and a big thanks to them for for sponsoring this video, as they always do. Right, okay, uh, back tomorrow for the the final one of the week, isn't it? We'll be looking ahead to to Livingston again. We've not even mentioned today, guys. That's how much has been going on 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 this video. Right, um, thank you. Catch you this time tomorrow.